Hey you guys, welcome back to our channel, the number one place for people who love design, art and everything creative. My name is Laszlo, I do graphic design and illustration and today's video is all about how to make art for Redbubble, how to make commercial art and how to make money on print on demand sites in general. Now building passive income streams is something that every creative should be striving for and I feel like there's no better time to look into this kind of stuff than now in this crazy year of 2020. So I thought let's talk about print on demand for artists. There are some really strong opinions out there about this topic online. Some people think it's a scam, other people think it's the best thing ever. Even the advice here on YouTube can be quite contradictory at times, so I thought let's try and clear things up a little. I'm gonna do my best to give you some actual tangible advice, going way beyond the generic tips that you are already aware of. Tips that hopefully can actually help you see the bigger picture and make you understand what this whole idea of print on demand is all about. I'm gonna cover the pros of Redbubble, the cons of Redbubble and at the end of the video I'm gonna show you six very specific tips that helped me getting my first couple sales. All that being said let's jump in and discuss and also design something nice for Redbubble while we're at it. First of all if you don't know print on demand websites are companies which let you sell your own merchandise. You register, upload your artwork and then sell it on a range of products that customers are able to purchase from your little online shop. T-shirts, mugs, art prints, that kind of stuff. These websites take care of everything involving the business side of things. Printing, postage, marketing, production costs, even stuff like dealing with complaints and returns. Leaving you to focus on what you do best, create more art and curate your little online shop of course. Now Redbubble is one of the best known ones and it's definitely my preferred one for a number of reasons. For one, Redbubble probably has the biggest range of available products. And while some of these print on demand sites can feel quite... Um, commercial. Redbubble first and foremost is for artists, which really does reflect on not just the quality of the artwork that you would find in this website, but the actual website itself, the user experience and the design is very artist friendly in my opinion. Now Redbubble is not paying me to say any of this, but Redbubble, if you're watching, Redbubble is a big brand and in a world of print on demand it makes perfect sense to partner up with brands that people know about. Now because it's so big, Redbubble is very well integrated with Google search engine. Meaning, if someone googles a specific item that you happen to sell in your Redbubble shop, it will actually come up as a Google ad, leading people to your web shop. Another thing I like about Redbubble, that it's they offer a bunch of small, relatively cheap items, which I think the whole website has built their foundations on. Things like stickers, pin buttons, fridge magnets, which I thought is the perfect format for the kind of illustration stuff that I like to do in my spare time. Now, an important thing about print on demand companies while you're using them is you have to think of yourself in terms of a business as opposed to being an artist, which makes certain people turn away by this kind of stuff by default. You know, commercial art. Even the phrase sounds a bit like a juxtaposition to many. This idea of selling out and using your God-given talent to sell socks and shower curtains, actually taking 20% of the profit by default, is not everyone's cup of tea and I, I totally understand it. Now the flow with this thinking is, if you want to be a professional artist of any kind, commerciality is always going to be an important factor within your practice. Whether you're an illustrator, a designer or a fine artist, before you even begin working on a client brief, you always have a clear idea on not just who exactly is going to pay for your work, but what the final format is going to be that's you know expected from you whether that's gonna be pictures for a children's book or an editorial piece on a magazine or you know an oil painting in your local gallery that doesn't really matter so in that sense personally i don't see anything wrong with you know designing with redbubble products in mind it's i don't see how that's any different to any other brief that might come your way or if it still sounds terrible to you think of the think of the one for me one for them principle you know a lot of people in the movie making business, actors and directors, have this philosophy of after every blockbuster, big popcorn movie, they want to do something more art -housey. That is how you get Robert Pattinson in a black and white film noir movie. And then for his next project he becomes the Batman. Or think of Dame Helen Mirren doing her very sophisticated dramas and then every now and then she pops up in a Fast and Furious movie. It's all about balance. If anything, I think print on demand sites are teaching beginner level artists how to be more commercial. The way I see it, this is a tool of market research. Professional artists spend a lifetime looking for people who will invest in their skills and I think print on demand sites are a great place to start doing just that. Now besides experience, they also provide the means to sell. 
Yes, they are taking a hefty portion of the profit after everything you sell, but as a beginner level artist, I'm guessing you don't have the equipment at home which would be needed for textile printing or making button pins. Hell, most of us don't even have a quality printer at home to make decent art prints. Now, for me, at least for now, these benefits actually outweigh the drawbacks, but it wouldn't be fair to only talk about the good things, so let's have a little chat about what you're giving up with a red bubble shop. Now, first of all, print on demand for artists will always be a short term solution to a long term problem. The problem being making money with your art within your own terms. Nothing will ever beat having your own website with your own shop where you are in full control of your own products. Your Redbubble page cannot be integrated to your own website, it will always stand out as an external link. Which is a problem because essentially it's taking people away from your site, leading the online traffic to somewhere where they have the option to buy from other artists instead of you. Keep in mind that while lots of people love Redbubble, no one has a favorite Redbubble artist. Redbubble is not a tool that builds your brand. In effect, you are building their brand by using them. When someone buys your artwork on Redbubble, they will get a Redbubble branded package in their post which says nothing about you, the original creator. You are not gaining fans, you can't customize the packaging and create a personal relationship with your buyers, which should be something an artist is striving for. You should never strive to be the best selling artist on Redbubble. In fact, if you do notice that your work is getting serious attention, the sales are flowing in and you are making decent money, you really should consider cutting them out. At the end of the day, it is a middleman between you and your customers, so as soon as you feel like you can afford to, take the third party out of the picture. Yes, it will mean you'll have to do everything by yourself, but the profit margins will be so much higher this way, as well as the actual customer engagement, which will, you know, eventually lead to even more sales, it's gonna worth it in the long run. Now, another drawback is that comparatively with a print-on-demand shop, you will always come across as a less professional artist than someone who took the time and effort to make their own shop. Customers do notice and appreciate the hard work that goes into a self-managed online store. We all like the extra effort, you know, a personal note, a feel of uniqueness, limited editions, all of that which you cannot provide with print-on-demand. As a beginner, you might not care about that for now, and that's fine, but it's something you have to be aware of. Because on the long run, you should really focus on building your own brand. Now, if you are still here and I didn't scare you away from using Redbubble, let me show you six very specific tips that I use in my practice. First of all, commercial art, just like fashion, goes around in seasonal circles, so you should make art for different times of the year. A good starting point is holidays, for example. I sell Halloween themed stickers, Christmas cards, that kind of stuff. You can also do Valentine's Day or Easter. Think in terms of whenever people would buy a greeting card, they could be buying your art. Also think of holidays you might not celebrate within your own circle. You know, Thanksgiving, Hogmanay, Diwali. Think global, not local. Secondly, as I mentioned earlier, have an end product in mind when you are designing. Look up in Redbubble search what are the best-selling designs within your chosen product and get inspired by them. Now do not copy them though, a copy of something will never sell as well as the original anyway. But if you can twist a popular subject matter and give it your own artistic flavor, executed to a high standard, it is likely to do well. Now in terms of formats, work with transparent PNGs whenever possible. Redbubble gives you the option to add your own background colors to anything by providing the hexadecimal codes, so keep your digital artwork layered within your RAW files, then take the background away before uploading. Have different versions of the same artwork, do color variants, make a light and a dark version of the same pattern for example. It will give your customers a greater choice and you are also expanding your portfolio more rapidly. Now put your artwork onto every product you possibly can. Why, you might ask? Well, first of all, in the beginning you don't know what product will sell well. You might think no one will buy a design on a dress, for example. You can be surprised. Also, it's all about search engine optimization. Redbubble, at the end of the day, is a search engine, just like Google. And what you are striving to do here is come up as a search result as many times as possible. You might never sell certain products from your shop, but as long as they get some views and lead people to your page, they are doing an important job. Now, there are some hidden items that are disabled by default within the upload page. 
You need to click on this little tab and tick kids clothes or active wear, for example, within a t-shirt entry. Also, Redbubble updates its range of products quite often and your old designs do not get onto these products automatically. So it's worth to go back to all their designs every now and then and configure them to the new stuff. And last but not least, bear in mind, it is not guaranteed that your work will get great attention and you're gonna break the bank by doing all the tips you find in YouTube videos. It might take weeks to get that first sale, it might take months. In the name of full transparency, let me tell you that I have set my shop up like five years ago and only now I'm getting to the point where I'm beginning to see a small degree of consistency within my sales. Granted, I haven't put much work into it in the first couple years. I think the trick is to never rely on this financially, just think of it as an experiment. And please never forget that the amount of sales you make is by no means a reflection on the quality of your artwork. Your art is amazing and with time you will surely find your own market. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video and get some value out of it. Hit like and subscribe to join our design tribe so you're always in the know what we're up to. We make videos about art, design, interiors, architecture, branding, illustration, all that good stuff. Take care guys and I'll see you this time next week. Bye.